My name is JC. I'm a poet and a co-founder of 23 Sampagita. I'm meeting today with another co-founder, the fine artist and creator of Caligra Filipino, Taipan Lucero. I'm where Taipan and I met in 2019, where our mutual interests and cultural advocacies and art eventually led to the formation of 23 Sampagita Artist Collective. Taipan, good evening. Good evening. Uh, all right, so let's start right back at the beginning. Have you always wished to be an artist? And uh, how old were you when you gave art its, you know, your first shot? Well, when I was young, I didn't really think that I would be an artist when I grew up. Probably my first encounter with the arts was when I was eight years old. I entered in a, an art workshop in the University of of the Philippines. My, my mom enrolled me in a summer art workshop for kids and the teacher or the moderator of that uh, workshop said that I had potential because uh, compared to other older kids my artwork was sort of I don't know how to explain but it it it, it kind of um, stood out from the other kids from my age range, I guess. So, but that that time I didn't really think about arts. But I had I had some interest in it, and my mom, who strongly supported my interests, also wanted me to to pursue whatever I wanted to do. And she didn't really force me into um, doing uh, the like the traditional sort of track that they want, like. For example, my father is a, is a lawyer, and my mother is a, uh, in the uh, the academic circle. So, but they they didn't really push me towards that kind of um, career path, and I'm very thankful for that because uh, I am enjoying I am enjoying what I'm doing right now. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so, speaking of career paths, you you graduated high school. You went to um, UP Diliman. Uh, you were cum laude, and uh, and you left uh, university to work as a graphic designer. Uh, was was that a halfway point between uh, academia and artistry, where you can uh, have an industry, or was graphic design a um, a calling as well? I think more of. Um, the capitalist side of art because of course I wanted to like help out with the family for work so graphic design was like the the middle ground between being an artist and being um, an earner I guess in the in the arts and design field and um, well I guess my passion for it which is, is what drove me to to the arts now because when I started out with graphic design, well, I all I also loved it. Um, it was I guess I grew into it. Uh, I, I I got into it initially because of school, of course, for the requirements for the uh, school work, and eventually it grew on to me. And it not only um, it it wasn't just about design; it was also about like advertising, marketing. So it was uh, creating. Um, copywriting, like um, taglines, scripts, um, spiels for commercials, for um, ads, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it it was it was a combination of art, my passion for art, I guess, and then it became design. And now I am more inclined to the design part as to the art, I guess. So it, it, I guess it is seen through my art that it's very, um, very planned, very uh, symmetrical, as opposed to like the term I guess was that was mentioned to me was painterly. So my, if you can see, my work is not very painterly. It's, it doesn't show many like strokes, like um, brush strokes. It's more, more really clean like planned strokes and stuff yeah yeah um that so i mean here we have one of your your stunning works that was done for uh ali Mu'om, uh, which was a uh art exhibition 
for Ibagu 2021. Um, uh, and uh, for those of you who have access to the internet, uh, it's also on sale for Art Fest. Yeah, Art Fair. Art, art Fair. Fair. Art yeah. Fair. Yeah. Sorry. Um, sorry, Art Fair. Art Fair Philippines. Yeah. yeah. Art Fair Philippines. Um, uh, link in comment. <laughs> um, uh, your, 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 your designs, uh, so talking about graphic designs, talking about taglines, uh, so words are very important to your, your art. Um, and as we can see here, uh, there's uh, lettering and designs there. So uh, the lettering is by Bayan. Uh, would you like to tell us a bit about by Bayan, how you found it as it's not a, uh, it's not a very well-known script. Yes. So, uh, as you mentioned a while ago, I was a graphic designer and I was exported, quote-unquote, to Japan as a designer. So, um, while I was doing my, my work there, my boss required me to, to take up Japanese calligraphy because he wanted me to understand and to... Um, to, Im to internalize their their design philosophies their art philosophies so uh, while i was doing that i experienced firsthand the the love and the respect of the japanese and how they treat their culture with such love and respect um e even the 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 little things like preparing the the materials the way they sit the way they 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 breathe the way they handle the the brush it's all done with respect that it is something that comes through so even when you're just in the room you you sort of you you're you're left in awe about how they how about how about they treat their 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 culture so i knew for a long time that there was uh by buy-in and it existed well not 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 entirely by buying because we have lots of different scripts that's lots of different names for our script so our ancient writing and so inspired by the while doing the Japanese calligraphy I I started exploring on how to uh, how to apply what I've learned with the Japanese calligraphy to our own writing so that's where, where it started and um, uh, I, I liked it. I, I, I wanted to do more of it. So what I did was I, I quit my job and I went back home to start uh, start calligraphy Filipino. So yeah, yeah. So there, there was no there was no crossover where you were half graphic designer, half fine artist. It was graphic designer and a split, and then then fine art. That's yeah. um, uh, in in an earlier interview with um, director Emmanuel De La Cruz. Uh, we were talking about how a bird doesn't know it can fly until it's ready to fall, and that's that's one of these great points, you know, where you just gamble everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you take that leap of faith that you don't know where it's going, but you have this feeling inside that it, it could lead to great things. So, yeah. by Bayan, are you fluent in by Bayan? Are you fluent in reading by Bayan? I would like to think so, yes, but. It, it it takes some like a few seconds before you could read it fully, wholly, because uh, it's not it's not it's not my first uh, script. So yeah, one last part on the Bobayan. Uh, I think it was in 2019 or 2020 you developed a Google keyboard for Bobayan. Uh, how was how was that experience? Did they reach out to you for the, for, for that? Actually, it was Google themselves. I, I didn't have any part in the creation of it. I was just, I was just invited to, to promote it and to hold a talk and workshop about by buying. So, yeah, it was a great experience. That hopefully it, it's being um, used widely now because um, it's a great tool not only for uh, by buying enthusiasts but for those who want to learn by buying. Uh, for yes. the millennials and the, the TikTokers out there, we've got, uh, uh, you can have your, your name or, or your, your, um, uh, your, your, your taglines in Babayan on, on your Instas yeah. and uh, uh, all those things that I only vaguely know about. Um, 
So uh, your your artistic practice uh, involves words and uh, often only one word in a painting, uh, and it's kind of a meditation or a reflection upon those words. What is the process of choosing the the, the piece, the word that that forms the piece? Usually, it's just words that are uplifting, inspirational. Um, like, uh, I don't know, tapang, which is courage, um, malaya, which is free. Just words like that, that, that could, could communicate feelings of, I don't know, inspiration, of um, courage. That basically just uplift the spirit of people. And yeah, that's because that's what I want to, uh, want to communicate with my art. When you look at it, it's, it gives inspiration to look at our culture and be inspired by it. The work also translates off canvas and uh, onto onto walls, onto uh, further design. So, uh, calligraphy Filipino is a blend of calligraphy, of graffiti, and the Filipino part being the Babayan. Uh, so, so graffiti culture. How does how does that blend into your 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 work process? Well, there's this movement or category of graffiti which is called calligraphy so it combines the the discipline of calligraphy and the sort of freeness of graffiti and this is this is one of the inspirations or one of the the artistic um, paths that I try to blend with my art uh, so with calligraphy it's not just about writing random stuff on on walls or, or creating like discord or chaos through words it's they they really create calligraphy through graffiti so it is also planned it is also um um thought beforehand so they 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 actually um have their own their own styles that they they try to um, incorporate with the graffiti. So it's not just it's not just about um, running and just tagging randomly. It's about it's about planning. It's about being artistic about what you're writing. More more to the construction of your your canvases uh, and and your um, uh, your gallery pieces. Uh, there's generally based on a uh, on like a singular color or, or, or two single colors um, together uh, and how do you use color to uh, emphasize the the inspiration behind the word that is the theme of the, the painting I try to use gold as much as possible because the reason behind this is I was inspired by the the exhibit called Gold of Our Ancestors at the Ayala Museum. It, it depicts our, uh, our ancient ancestors as those, they were sort, sort of royalty that they had gold like dripping off their, their body. Like they had chains, they had um, earrings. Our, the, the ancient Philippines had so much gold that yeah, it, in excess that they 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 use gold for every little thing, like just for buckles, for for the ends of their their belts, they use gold. Very common to have gold back then, and uh, I wanted to communicate that the the richness of our ancestors that not only we did that we had um, wealth that is monetary, but we also had wealth that. Was cultural so so those two those two aspects I wanted to communicate by using gold and to emphasize the, the gold color I, I usually put them on a black uh, ba black background so that the gold will will, will come out would, would pop and yeah basically that's the, the, the those two colors is what I use mostly for my artworks but sometimes I try to to add more color like 
being inspired by the Okir of the Maranao, which is a very colorful, curvilinear pattern which they use around their house. Like, it has very bright colors, like um, like sort of teal, yellow, red. So sometimes I try to do that, but I'm not that good with <laughs> mixing colors. So I, I stick more to gold and black. Yeah, and because... going back again to the graphic design thing that with more design is more of like I guess it I guess it's my own preference that's very minimal using few colors for it so yeah I guess I guess it goes back to my design roots as well just using few colors for it uh, when constructing your work are you using uh, a grid pattern do you uh, stencil onto your um, uh, to your canvas before applying the colors how do you because uh, I don't know if it's picked up by the cameras but the the letters are very precise there's actually in the yellow gold here more gold letters uh, and so it's you know concentric circles of letters so you have to be very precise and your spelling has to be good. Um, uh, actually, I, I just plot it. I, I use a compass and rulers, basically, yeah. And I think using a stencil is more efficient, but I haven't really mastered how to use it. So I just use it manually, just writing um, You do lines. it the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cultural advocacy is something that's important to you. Pinoy pride, uh, pride in pride in Filipino. How, how do you uh, bring something like art, like high concept art, to uh, to the masses who might not a get to a museum or not have the inclination? What I do is, I I try to maximize my social media presence. So that's Facebook and Instagram. So mostly I, I try to communicate like if, if I want to post something informative, something inspirational, oh. like not even about by buying, like just if we have like plans for, I don't know, infrastructure that would, would uplift lives. I, I, I post that on my Instagram, uh, on my Facebook sometimes. I guess that's how I try to communicate to uh, the majority of people because Facebook is really uh, a big thing in the Philippines and a lot, most of the people uh, use it for as a means of co communication, means to connect with people. So I try to use that pa platform to, to, I don't want to use the word educate because it sounds like I'm, I'm trying to, <laughs> to educate people because I'm not an educator. I just want to to share like my insights, my, my knowledge, my, my personal knowledge, but yeah, I guess sometimes to, to share, um, you know, insights, um, things to be proud of. And, well, my, my exhibits also sometimes, if, well, I only have had one public exhibit, but in the future going forward, of course, I want to, to open the exhibit to, to a lot of people. Yeah. Supposedly, my second exhibit was, was supposed to be in, in my in my alma mater in, in UP, but because of COVID, that was uh, that was hampered and it was made to go online. Yeah, basically just through social media, mostly that's that's how I try to communicate with um, with lots of people. And, and social media is one of those things where you can be given a figure on your reach, but you never truly know you know uh, who you're reaching and then who they are reaching. So we were just talking about uh, social media and um, and community uh, reaching communities. Uh, your advocacy work, though, is um, uh, not just uh, about, about artworks. We're also talking about infrastructure. Uh, another thing that you're uh, a big poster on is. Uh, Filipino sports stars um, making it making it big in the world. Um, so uh, Heidelin, uh, the uh, Olympic weightlifter who won the Philippines' first gold, uh, you saw that as an important moment. Yeah, yeah. Things like um, Philippines Military Academy uh, appearing in your um, uh, in your social media posts, and I can see a um, a crossover between. Um, different forms of um, discipline, you know, 
know, uh, so sport, you've got to be really disciplined to, to succeed. Art, you have to have a discipline to, to, to succeed. The, the, the master um, calligraphers in Japan, uh, their discipline extended to how they breathe and sat, as you said. Uh, how important is a disciplined approach to your process? One of the most important uh, aspects of what I do because yeah, as you've mentioned, the, the calligraphy masters in Japan, probably all over the world, not in Japan, not just in Japan, the Western calligraphers also, they, they, they practice like all day, every day. And that's one of the most important things is to, to, to master your craft and to improve because every day there's always room to improve like i'm trying to find um, new ways to to be more efficient when writing or if um, something something new pops up like i don't know if if i find a, a better form for this letter i try to implement that so it's a, a constant way of updating yourself your skills your 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 uh, your aesthetic the reason why you try to perfect or well for me is because i want like only of course of course the best to represent our culture like if if there's a more beautiful more efficient way of writing this then of course that's what i'll pursue and that takes discipline in itself so so building from that uh you know, obviously, you look back over time, you can see your, your growth and your and your evolutions. Will you revisit, say, words and concepts from uh, 2017, you know, this year, next year, and, uh, you know, use the same word, the same colour thing and try to improve? Or will they, uh, you know, will next time it not be the same design but the same word? Well, probably I will because... Sometimes I, I look at my artworks that I do now and maybe I'm not satisfied with it. Then I, maybe I'll, I'll go back to my works a few years before and then I'll, I'll, find, I'll find the form that I, that I really like now. Then maybe I'll implement it. Mixing and matching what you've learned and what you've been through. And then, I don't know, use it moving forward maybe. I don't know. The <laughs> preciseness of your work. When you know, a mistake creeps in, how how uh, recoverable is the piece of work? Is, is every work perfect or is every work got flaws in it that you have had to come back and retouch? Well, that's that's one of my like sort of secrets. That's why I use <laughs> black yep. because it's easy to cover mistakes when using black. So, um, yeah, it's hard if using other colors. Like if you if you if you use a custom color, like you mix like certain parts percentages of a certain color, and you and I use it as a background, then that would be hard to correct because I wouldn't have that specific color anymore to to cover the mistake. So that's that's one of my secrets is using black. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, there. Sometimes I make mistakes, and I. It's hard to correct them, and some. What I do is power through with it. Like uh, I'll. I'll write over it. Yeah. Or just so uh, uh, one of my hobbies is uh, miniature painting, and if I look back at my uh, fifteen years of, of doing this hobby, uh, you know, I can see a, a huge change in you know my attitude towards fixing mistakes my my just overall skill at doing it um, but i think one of the the big instant improvers in uh in my my hobby practice has been uh affording better quality stuff as you know compared to teenage me to, to adult me uh is this um, something that you find where, where high quality 
paint is so much better high quality canvas is so much better. yes definitely especially with with the gold gold paint because the the lower quality paint has little pigment in it in it so the coverage is not that good and as opposed to the the higher quality paints which it has more coverage so you don't you don't have to to go over it many many layers so with just yeah and but surprisingly there's this paint marker that i use which is not not as expensive as the those available that are higher higher in price but it i find it more like more beautiful than those expensive so it doesn't i don't know it, it may not really apply to all circumstances that the more expensive quality or more more expensive tools are better quality yeah. specifically yeah. with paint i think the more expensive ones are better and with canvas yeah canvas um not necessarily if you have uh, a, a a good um canvas maker then doesn't necessarily have to be expensive um speaking of your canvases and again this is not something that the uh the cameras are going to to pick up but i see that the bye bye and work continues around the edges of the, the canvas uh, which is to me a real joy to see because uh generally that's just background color on most canvases what led you um, to include no, that it's nothing really i just i just when I when I was finishing it up, actually that was, that was just like a last minute thought that when I saw the the side, oh it's just blank. And I'm, Let me put something on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it turns out like it's it's something that could be a, a good feature for future works, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like an Easter egg, you know. Uh, it, it, especially because you know the, the 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 double gold colors, you know, like. Uh, uh, you can see it when the light hits in a in a certain way, and it, and it pops out. So earlier, you were saying that uh, you know your your works aren't painterly because you know you don't use your um, you know pointillism or, or you know those other sort of um, uh, traditional art techniques. Um, have you ever? produced works um you know outside of your your um recipe um and and, and dabble into you know um, uh, oils and uh water and, you know, all the other when when my art my patrons buy my artworks i usually accompany them with a, a small watercolor artwork that with uh I use like the traditional calligraphy using brush pens. So, um, like, I I I don't know if you saw my story with the with the gunita thing. That's the the thing I usually uh, give as a like a sort of small gift as a thank you for for purchasing a commission or an artwork. So, yeah, that that's also a different sort of aesthetic because. The tool is different. It's a it's a brush pen that uses um, water ink that it produces a different look, a different feel, and it's it's also something that um, I could explore maybe. Also, sometimes digital. Uh, digital is a more um, easy is an easier way to communicate my art I guess. Your digital designs uh, have been utilized in um, uh, apparel recently. Um, a line of hats have had your your uh, designs in them. Uh, how did that collaboration, because that, that was with a, um, uh, a, a rap band? Well, it's, it's actually a collaboration with the uh, a, a local brand that all, the, the, the rap the rap community, I guess, supports them that brand because it started out as a as a staunch supporter of the hip hop community. So I guess it's a mutual beneficial sort of arrangement. And I, I didn't start out with by buying with paintings. I, I I I tried to monetize my my works immediately through apparel, through shirts, and that's when the company contacted me when they saw my designs on shirts 
and that was 2016 my first uh, collaboration with them and it it still goes on to now because i believe that their uh, their purpose or their motivation for their 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 caps are aligned with mine because they also showcase filipino culture filipino uh, pride um, they also have some by buying designs that uh, are not by, made by me so so it it really aligns and that's my only outlet now for apparel because i don't i i i i want to shift permanently to fine art paintings and um with apparel i tried and i don't want to release any more apparel because uh yeah i'm trying to be known more as a as an artist nowadays no yeah so for our audience members uh links below to those caps snap them up now <laughs> and uh Pass them on to your grandchildren because they'll be worth something. Uh, last question um, is, or the last series of questions is about 23 San Pedita. So we're up here at 23, uh, Attic 23, uh, and you've brought along the uh, the artwork. Um, 23 San Pedita started as a uh, as a conversation between uh, you and I and a couple of our, our other uh, co-founders. Uh, and at the time, we weren't sure whether we would pursue a, uh, a shop that sold uh, culture back to the Filipino people. Uh, we weren't um, sure if we would start up a, a artist retreat, which was my original idea, or, um, uh, or, a, or a bed and breakfast. Uh, but <laughs> you, uh, so so you, you, you've come along uh, from this journey from day one. What are your what are your um, biggest, proudest parts of uh, Twenty Three San Pedita, and where do you see Twenty Three San Pedita um, being as it grows to you know it's expanding with the things? What I want is just to be a contributor in the background, like. Because I'm not that as outgoing as some of our uh, founders, some of our members. So what I'm trying to do is to be like support in the background. Like I try to contribute my my graphic design skills, my advertising skills. So any way that I could help, that's what I'm proud of here. For the direction of uh, our our collective, I guess we learn as we go. Like. Um, we, when we when we started the events or uh, like Pagsibol, like with Attic, <laughs> with Attic 23, like Hanjong and Jill, th that was their idea, and I think that's uh, that's a great uh, a great direction that we could pursue because uh, it not only showcases the, the talent, the local talent here, it gives them a platform for for their for their music, for their talents. We can expand it not just for music, maybe uh, poetry, for um, what else? Uh, live art, things like that. It's very, yeah, it's yeah. a very, it's a wide, it's a wide range of uh, possibilities. And yeah, I think we we le we learn as we go. I, I don't want to use the word popular popularity lies, but I guess that's that's a, a factor because. That's that's where we will know what what appeals to the to the, to the to the masses to our audience. So because of our mul uh, our multiple strengths as individuals, we can create like big things in our own avenues that would be culminated in Sampagita itself. That we uh, as we we've, we've been discussing. Uh, I don't know if it's it's something that we could pursue but because of the like the petals we have uh, teatro sampagita we have um, musica sampagita uh, things like that so each of those directions could be could be great could be something really huge in the future yeah i, I obviously share the view with you and uh you know that's that's why these uh four years have been been so exciting and fun thank you for your time uh, thank you for sitting down with us. Uh, we'll have more of these conversations with our different um, 
uh, co-founders and uh, key members as, as time goes on. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll have you in front of the cameras again. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So epic. Yeah.